Okay, so continuing here, you know, we've talked about what narcissism is. This person needs to feel special, more special than you. They're entitled to more than you and everybody else. They really don't have self-worth. <laughs> they have inflated self, sort of like a currency that's inflated so it's you know feels worthless on the other end. And they just are always looking to feel better. And they gotta have the new best thing and the best this and the best that and it just gets tiring. Okay, so you're on the other end of that. So what do you do? Well, first of all, it's good to know what you're dealing with, all right? So first thing I wanna do is I want to normalize your feelings because you can't get strategic about dealing with emotions until you label them appropriately. Now I'm gonna say that again. You can't get strategic and smart and deal with your emotions in a relationship until you've labeled them and normalized them. So what happens is you're feeling on the other end of this, you feel disregarded, you feel ignored, you feel treated poorly, you feel condescended to, you feel like some, somebody's acting like they're superior and all of that. And here's the problem, because you're kind of normal, you expect other people to be normal. And so when they do that, you see that as something's wrong here. And so you'll react as if, this is the worst part about it, first, for a while you think something's wrong with you. You'll feel like not good enough around this person. Well, they're trying to make you feel not good enough inadvertently because they're always trying to make themselves feel better. So one of the chief characteristics that you're gonna feel in this relationship that you need to normalize is when you feel like I just feel less than. I feel like I'm not good enough. I feel like they feel like I'm not good enough. Okay, don't see that as something's wrong here, which it is, but see it as, oh, I feel that way for a reason because that's kind of who they are, okay? I feel ignored because, you know what, this is somebody that doesn't really see my feelings, doesn't really see my needs. I feel unfulfilled, of course you do, because they're not meeting those needs. So here's kind of what, when I say normalize this, I don't, I'm not saying that's good, I'm saying that you don't walk out into a rainstorm and start feeling like, what are you doing, raining, why, what is, how come I'm getting, you're in a rainstorm, okay? That's what I mean by it's normal to get wet when it's raining. So when you're with somebody that's exhibiting narcissistic behavior and traits and all that, we still don't know where it comes from yet, but you're experiencing that, I want you to realize, oh, that's what this is. I'm feeling ignored because this person's kind of all about themselves. I'm feeling condescended to because they feel like they're special. So what will that do? Well, now I can get strategic because when I walk out into the rain, I don't cry foul that it's raining and try to get the rain to stop getting me wet. What do I do? I go, it's raining, I better carry an umbrella. Better put on a raincoat. Maybe don't wanna go outside. See, there's a lot of options you have once you figure out that it's raining. Hey guys, welcome to this topic on gaslighting. And you know, it's a term we hear a lot about now, which really I'm glad of because for years and years and years, people would get gaslighted and it helps to have something to call it because a lot of times when you are gaslighted, you just know something's wrong. You don't know what it is. And that's the essence of how hurtful and how powerful this is. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through a good kind of clear picture of what gaslighting is, and then also give you some solutions to it. So let's hop into it. What is gaslighting? Well, gaslighting is basically psychological manipulation that somebody does in a relationship to make another person question their reality, okay? If you can get somebody questioning their reality, what does that give you the power to do? Manipulate them, control them, dominate them, degrade them, a lot of different ways to exploit a person. And what happens is you see people 
getting into relationships that look good until they get into them. And then slowly this other person, a lot of times because of their own personality problems like extreme narcissism or other issues, they'll start to control the person they're in a relationship with through gaslighting. And it's really, really painful. So let's look at it for a second. How does this work? How can, how can somebody do this? Well, you know what? You come by it honestly if you're a victim of gaslighting because what gaslighting does is it uses one of your biggest assets in life against you. See, one of our biggest assets in life is our ability to figure out what's real. I mean, every minute of every day, we have to say, what's real? You know, where am I? Who's this person? Is there danger here? Is the air good to breathe? What time is it? And we have to always be assessing reality. Who I am, who you are, is it safe? See, that's how we even walk from the parking lot, you know, to the building. We're assessing reality. Now, here's the thing about good, honest people. And if you've been a victim, there's really good chances that you're a good, honest, loving person. Is that in order to assess reality, we have to do something that's very, very good to do. And that is we have to be open to the outside world to take in input and data from the outside world and use that to create our maps of what's going on. And this is a developmental thing that begins in childhood. For example, one of the things we know about about people's pain thresholds, when their brain actually determines pain, and I'm not talking about psychologically only, I'm talking about the psychology that goes into the experience of physical pain, is you watch a little kid, they'll, they'll fall down, and what do they do? They look up to the parent, and the parent goes, oh, it's fine, you're okay, and they go, oh, Or the parent goes, ah, and the kid goes, ah, because we're getting input from the outside world to determine what reality is. You know, you've all heard about mirror neurons, for example. It's when we see something that somebody else does and we have the same reaction in our brain that they, you know, that we have when we're doing the action. We're built to get reality in part. And here's the key that I want you to hear. We're built to get reality in a relationship between our own experience and the feedback from the external world. Now, there's a really good way to think about this in terms of the science. Historically, this has been called assimilation and accommodation. It's how we build cognitive maps of the world. You assimilate, you take in new data and then you accommodate that, you shift your view, okay? So for example, if I think the earth is flat, okay? That's my experience, that's what I think, that's what I know, I have this opinion. But you show me a satellite picture, go, whoa, that dude is round, then I take that data in and I change my view. All right, that's great in life until it isn't. Here's where it gets bad. Your experience of somebody hurting you, for example, your experience is that hurt. Well, what if the outside world tells you, that didn't hurt, I didn't do anything, I don't know what your problem is. Shut up or I'll give you something to cry about. You see a lot of parenting techniques that are like this that invalidate somebody's experience. They talk them out of their own reality. You see a lot of times in childhood, people are told those very sentences. That didn't hurt. What are you talking about? You're, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. That's not a big deal. And it's called minimizing. It's called invalidating. There's a lot of words for it. But what it does is it confuses a person. Well, okay, I guess that didn't hurt, but I hurt. And now I start to question myself. Okay, and I start to doubt one of the most grounding things we have in life and that's our own experience. And so what it does is it takes somebody like you who is honest, right? And by, because you're honest, you're open, you'll, you'll take correction, you'll take feedback, but it gives you correction and feedback that is a lie 
to invalidate the truth of what you're experiencing. See, we need each other to get to reality. How many times have you, have you had an experience where you, you walk out and you go, gosh, that, that person was so mean, or that was so this, or this, that, and the other, and you go talk to a good friend and they listen to you and they empathize, and then you talk about it and you go, well, you know, I guess it'll be okay. I guess they probably didn't mean it that way. I guess they're, and what happens? That empathy and that understanding actually gets us to a larger view of reality than even reality that was hurting us maybe more than it should have, okay? That's a real thing too. Sometimes I can feel offended when somebody didn't mean it to be offensive at all. And this thing works both ways. But in gaslighting, it's always in one direction. It's always used by the person trying to gain power to talk you out of generally the hurt that they're inflicting upon you. And that's why it's so dangerous. Okay, so what happens if somebody's gaslighting you? You're in a relationship, and what we're talking about is somebody that's really not interested in the reality of your experience in the relationship. What they're interested in is controlling your reality of your experience in the relationship, and that will cause you some symptoms. How do you know you're being gaslighted? Well, number one, you're confused a lot of times. Well, it seems like, I mean, they told me this, but then I saw them doing, I mean, I want to trust them, but then they said this, and then you question them about it, and they say, what's your problem? Of course you knew that. Well, I, no, they didn't. That's not where they said they were going, and you're confused. They're always confusing you. About, I thought I saw, I thought you said this. I know I felt this, but it's invalidated, and so you start to get confused, and then you start to doubt yourself. You start to question yourself. Then you're your view of yourself can change. You start to, I've heard, I've heard people say, sometimes I didn't even know who I was when I was with them. I started to like, I was so confused about even, even what happened to my old self. I didn't feel like my old self. One of the things you start to feel is like you're doing everything wrong because they do kind of pick at a lot of times everything you do. Sometimes you might not even know what's wrong, but you know something's wrong. Something doesn't feel right, but then you're taught to question those senses. What else happens? You start to feel isolated. The gaslighter's kind of getting you further away from other inputs a lot of times of reality. You start to question your own decisions. They're telling you stuff like, you're too sensitive. Why, why are you always over-dramatizing everything? Why are you, and, and you start to feel like, guess, I guess, I guess I'm just overreacting. I guess I'm just, I'm just too sensitive. And then you start to get in a pattern of apologizing a lot. That's another big symptom. Always apologizing to the gaslighter. And then it kicks in where you start to, to really kind of go to their side and maybe you're defending bad behavior to other people who notice. Well, he's just, you know, it's okay because he's just... And you start to make excuses for this person because somehow... Other people are noticing things as well. Then the emotions start to kick in where you feel powerless and hopeless. A lot of symptoms. It's a really, really, really terrible place to live. So how do they do this? Well, I want you to watch for these methods. If you're getting gaslighted, the main thing, the main thing is someone is invalidating your experience. Our experience is really, really, really important, okay? Our experience keeps us safe. If you live in a cold region in the January, in January, you might be one of those people that goes ice fishing and you walk out onto the frozen pond. Well, what do you do? You start to walk out and you feel it. And if it feels solid, you trust that. If it starts to go you hear that? You trust that and you back off. Well, let's say you're starting to walk across that ice and you hear, but you're with somebody that says, no, 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 that, that, that's just the wind. It does that all the time. Talks you out of that and you keep walking. What happens? You fall into the frozen water. And see, that's what they do. 
And so the methods that people are going to use to gaslight you is when you have an opinion, when you have an experience, when you see something, when you notice something, when you feel something, when you observe something, they invalidate it, which means in some tactic, and there's a whole list of them that, you know, we can name and I'll name some of them here, but some tactic, they tell you that's not true. That's not real. You dreamt that up. So how do they do this? Well, they, first of all, can just negate it like that. That's not true. I didn't do that. I didn't say that. No, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't there. You didn't see that. And there's just an instant, instant, instant negation to make you feel like you didn't hear something that you actually heard somebody say or that you didn't see something you actually saw. Here's another one. Minimizing. No, oh, it's not that bad. No, I wasn't that late. No, I didn't really scream at you. I didn't drink that much. No, and there's always a way that something up here, if it's negative, especially about them or your pain, something at this level, it gets minimized. And the problem, they're controlling you to think, it's really not that bad at all. No, you're a mountain out of a molehill kind of thing, like I said. So to minimize it, to deny it, straight out deny it. No, they didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. And you're like, and then you start to go, well, didn't I? I thought I remembered he said or she said. So there's a just a clear denial. Again, negating your experience. Okay, you're saying, well, I feel hurt by this. Well, I didn't hurt you. Well, Okay, <laughs> but the experience is I am hurting, right? That's still true. And then they'll counter everything you say. There's never going to be something like, really, that's interesting. Tell me more about that. Why do you feel that way? Instead, there's going to be a counter to it. If you say A, they say no, that's B. You know, it's just not true. Then what they'll do sometimes is unplug and not engage. You ask them about something, you say, I don't know anything about that. And just unplug. We're not going to talk about it. It's like it doesn't exist. Stonewall. Just not engage on the topic whatsoever. Or change the topic. Some way to get around it. And then here's another one. They'll use labeling using stereotypes. Well, of, of, all women think that. Or all blanks, you know, just fill in the blank. Well, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're an accountant. Of course you're going to be pedantic about the numbers and, or, and stingy. Or you're this or you're that. You know, ethnic groups, gender, whatever it is. But they, they'll use some label that negates your experience because you're one of them, whatever that group is. You know, you're, of course you're emotional. You're what, whatever you are, okay? These are tactics, but you're going to regain your power when you understand that these tactics are all meant to do one thing, and that's to get you to question your reality, usually of them and their behavior, but sometimes around whatever it is, the surroundings, there's a negation that happens. It's interesting, you know, the original term came from a movie back in, I think, the 40s, where a guy was trying to get control of his life and he would start to dim the lights, turn the gas light down, right? You know, call, I think he did it somewhere in the attic and the lights would begin to flicker and she'd go, what's that? And he'd say, I didn't see anything. You know, it's gradually, gradually, she starts to really go crazy, okay? Now, that's the tactics. It's very important to understand what these tactics are because if you don't see them, you're going to get pulled into them. And gradually, what do they do? Here's the result. Gradually, they wear you down. And I've seen people get reduced to like a former, a, their former self is, is gone. I've seen people, I knew them here. They got in this relationship. I saw them again here. I was like, where did she go? Or where did he go? What happened to them? They're not who they used to be. And see, gaslighting talks you out of yourself. 
it also wears you down in your ability to see the reality of other people. You just sort of like buy in and drink the Kool-Aid of whatever, you know, whoever that is who's convincing you of this. And then it also wears you down <clears throat> and it shrinks life. People get, one of the things that happens a lot in gaslighting is, is the person with power pulls them out of life. They kidnap them away from their friends. They kidnap them away from, you know, external activities and things that they used to do. Life gets smaller when you're kidnapped. So what are we going to do about it? Well, you might be victimized by this, but you don't have to remain a victim if you can learn the tools and get out of the spell, right? And so how do we do this? I'm going to give you some important tactics here. Number one, number one, number one, number one, number one, tune in to your own experience. Because what's happened now is you've slowly gotten into a dependency of looking to somebody else kind of to tell you what you think or what you think or what you feel. So I want you to go back inside and say, no, that that hurts. No, I, I, I do feel alone. No, something doesn't feel right about this. So tune into your own experience and value it, okay? Now, the next thing from there, remember I told you earlier, this happens for good reason because we do need external validation. The thing to do from there is to go talk to someone that you can trust and say, here's what's happening. Here's what he did, or here's what she said, or here's what I saw, but then they said this. Talk to somebody else, and what you're going to hear on the other side, if you're truly gaslighting, you're going to hear somebody say, no, that does sound weird. Of course you're questioning that. No, that makes sense to not like that. And, and I've heard people say, okay, well, that helps because I really, I started to think I was crazy. This really helps me. I thought I was nuts. And they start to regain, oh good, because now I, I had become convinced. And you hear these phrases, they'd gone through this transition away from reality because somebody talked them out of it. Well, now we need somebody else to say, you're not imagining this, okay? You're not imagining it, this. Yes, that would hurt. Yes, that's inappropriate. No, that's not normal what he or she is doing. So talk to somebody that's trusted. Now, one little warning about that. Sometimes people go talk to other people who actually are not giving them real feedback to try to find reality or in the service of their best interests or in the service of the relationship. The person they're talking to actually has an agenda. Okay. I used to see this with a lot of therapists when, when I was working with and around you know large clinical community. You had some therapists who really had an agenda against whatever the topic was. Some of them, they might have had an agenda against bosses. Somebody comes and says something about their experience with their boss, then that therapist is joining them about, you know, sue him or her whatever it is, because they've got an agenda. Sometimes it's an agenda towards parents. Sometimes it's an agenda towards men. Sometimes it's an agenda towards women. It could be anything, but that person really is not helping you find reality. They're joining your data and engaging you in an agenda. This is how relationships get split up sometimes because somebody will just instantly join somebody's experience. Some of the best experiences I've ever had to grow as a person is when I was, I was experiencing somebody in a certain way, like they just feel so mean to me or abusive or controlling or whatever. And I go talk to a third party and they go, well, no, I don't think what they did was that bad. I think you're overreacting. I think, and it, it kind of got me out of my, my distortion. I went back and said, you know, they were right. That really helped me. On, at other times, it could be exactly the opposite. But who you talk to, is really important because sometimes what we need is we need correcting. We're not being gaslighted. We have a transference of some sort where we're seeing badness or danger or control where it's not there, okay? But in gaslighting, a lot of times that's not what's happening at all. You are seeing reality, okay? You know something's wrong 
and you need somebody to validate it. I'm just saying, make sure you can trust this person to really see reality themselves and to help you to find it. Okay, so a trusted other. Now, here's another big part of this. A lot of times people start to question things. Well, if you go, you know, look very deeply into this, especially especially in dangerous, feeling like dangerous situations, it's really good sometimes to keep a diary. Okay, keep a journal. Like, okay, I'm starting to feel, am I drinking? And then when something happens, then go write it down. Okay, keep, you know, watch this stuff. And as you're doing it and you're writing it down and you're keeping a record of it, you can actually take that and then you can go talk to whoever you're going to talk to and say, here's what I said, here's what she said, here's what I said, here's what he said, here's what happened. And you really have a documentation so you don't go back and then begin to question yourself. Now, what I've seen some people do, and, and you know, this can be, very, very protective in some some situations if later it needs to be get used for evidence. I've seen some people record situations. Now, you should check your local state laws on this because it is illegal to record people without their knowledge in a lot of places. But I have seen people just, you know, they just kind of reach in their pocket or look like they're looking at and they turn on their memo recorder, and then they go into the couple's counseling, and the other person is negating everything. They just pull out their phone, they hit play, and the therapist hears all of it like it really, really happened. Now, I don't know if you can do that or not. You gotta check out the legalities, but sometimes whatever whatever method you use to, to kind of keep a record so you have some way to validate this and some way to talk about it And you're not going to forget it and you're not going to question yourself. Now, sometimes with financial records and other kind of behaviors and stuff like this, there are gaslighting situations where somebody's going to make sure that you're not doing that. They're going to look at your email. They're going to look at this and this and that. What some people have to do is they have to actually take that and give it to a friend. Say, you hold it for me because I got to go talk to my attorney to get a restraining order or, you know, the settlement or whatever it is. Sometimes... You've got to go to protect yourself. Now, in the interpersonal part of it, I'm going to give you another couple of tools. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Now, sometimes, you know, uh, you got to remember, you're not going to change another person. But you can have the kind of boundaries that help you to hold on to your own experience. So when somebody is gaslighting you and this and the other, the boundary would be, well, I'm sorry you see it that way. I have a different perspective. It's interesting. I'll have to think about that. That's very interesting that you think that. My view of that is different. Yeah, I don't see it that way. Oh, well, you know, I guess we have to agree to disagree. But what you're doing is you're giving a boundary, of, and that's all you're going to talk about. You're not going to engage in further debating it. Say, I don't really want to talk about this anymore. I'll just agree to disagree. You want to talk about something else? Because what you're doing is you're establishing a boundary that does two things. It draws a circle around, this is my experience, this is what I think, and I know I saw this, I know I heard it, and I'm not going to engage further in yours. Okay? See, that sets the boundary to hold on to your own sanity. Now, right here at the end, we only, you know, probably got a few more minutes in this, but here's what I'd like to say. Some of you, some of this is psychological, this kind of crummy relationship stuff. Some of it is dangerous. Okay, there are people that use gaslighting that really are hurtful. They really are abusive, and they really sometimes even get into physical dangers and domestic violence and other things like that. Gaslighting fits into many of those scenarios. So the first thing you want to always be thinking about is what kind of danger am I in here? I'm getting gaslighted. Okay, I can deal with that in all these various ways. But sometimes you may have to have on speed dial, who's your safe person you're going to call? Sometimes you might have to have an escape plan. I've seen that be very applicable. Somebody knows how they're going to get out. Somebody knows what their support systems are going to be. And they have to plan for that. Some of you need to sneak out and go to a shelter. There's a lot of different ways. I just don't want you to take this sometimes too lightly if you're in a dangerous situation. 
because you have to get to safety. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. You might want to watch this a few times, but I'm going to simplify it here at the end to this. We all have our experience. We all need others to help us find out if our experience is accurate or not. That's how we find reality. We find reality in community. We find reality in debate. We find reality in sharing different opinions and taking your input and accommodating it and all of that. But there's always two parts of that. There's my experience and there's the input I'm getting. When the input that I'm getting is always in one direction, <laughs> where it negates my experience, particularly in the ways of how I'm feeling and thinking and reacting in relation to the behavior of the other person, where they're, I'm calling them on things and they're negating the reality of what I see or what I'm experiencing or the loneliness that I feel or any of that, that might be gaslighting, okay? Hang on to your experience, find some validation for it, question it, but try to get good sources of reality so you're not being controlled, manipulated, and ultimately exploited.